Okay, so let's get started with our practical implementation of thresholding, binarization, and adaptive thresholding. So let's open our thresholding notebook here, which is number eight. Bring this up and let's take a look at our sample code for thresholding. So firstly, what we do, we grayscale an image here. All right. So this is our test image here. This is to demonstrate the different types of thresholding I mentioned before, which is trash binary, trash binary inverse, trash trunk, trash to zero and trash to zero inverse. So before we start this, okay, what I want to do is just read through each of these comments here that, that describe what each of them are going to do. So in this one, this is a basic one you've seen in the slides before. Values below 127 goes to zero and that's black and everything above goes to 255, which is white. Now, trash binary inverse is basically the opposite of that. Anything below 127 goes up to the brightest and anything that's above 127 goes to the darkest, which is black. And what about this one? Values above 127 are truncated or held at 127. And the 255 argument here is unused, by the way, just to note. By the way, what this does is a way just to cap maximum brightness values. So you'll take a look and you'll see for yourself. And trash to zero, this one, values below 127 goes to zero and above 127 are unchanged. So it's not exactly a true binarization of the image, but it's a form of thresholding that you'll see. And this should be reverse thing I typed. All right, of the above, below 127 isn't changed and above 127 goes to zero. So basically just the inverse of this here. So now let's take a look at this and you can actually see for yourself what's happening. So let's start with the original image here and the trash to binary. So as you can see, this is a gradient image here, starts at the darkest here, zero and goes all the way to 255. So you can see the full range of grays here. And a lot of it is basically some white and some black at the bottom here. So you can see this is 127 value here. Everything below 127 goes to black or zero. Everything above 127 goes to white. So let's take a look at the second one, which is the reverse. And that is exactly what you expected here, okay? And I just had to check something to make sure that the reason why it's actually not exactly the flip of this is because we have a different threshold value here. Previously, this is probably my mistake in my code, but it's a good teaching dumb tutorial here, is that in this one here, we use the threshold value as 200, not 127. So this is not a linear gradient here, okay? It is a lot bit larger in the, in the white side or the brighter side. So this is the 200 value right here, and this is the 127. So 127 is actually kind of far up here. And I thought this made sense since this grayscale image doesn't seem to be a uniform transition. It shows a bit more of the lighter regions than the darker regions. Anyway, so that's fine. So this is this of this, all right? Now let's look at trash trunk, okay? Now remember, trash trunk is an odd one. Let's just minimize this so it doesn't distract us. Trash trunk, let's read it again, was right here. Values above 127 are truncated and held at 127. So what does that mean? It means that imagine you're seeing zero to one is 27 here and 127 values, everything above it is just kept at 127. So it's pretty much, I don't know if this shows up in your video, but it's pretty much an illusion that is a bright line right here. There's just, constant 127 here and below that goes to 127 to zero. Hope you understood that. And let's look at the fourth one, which is trash to zero. Okay. And it's kind of similar to what we described just now. Everything below 127 here goes black to zero. Everything above remains unchanged. And lastly, the reverse of that is this one. So you can actually see that it's reversed. Everything above 127, it just goes clamped to zero and everything between zero and 127 remains unchanged. So those are the five different thresholding methods here. You can use binary thresholding methods you can use in OpenCV, but is there a better way of doing this? Okay, remember I said you have to manually enter your thresholding value, which is this first argument here. By the way, this argument here is the max value of the threshold. So you, you can put us whatever you want. I like to use the full binary values, white or black, so you can actually see it's done here. Oh, also, just so you know, whenever you load an image using imread and you have a comma and zero, it means you're loading it as a grayscale image. So it's just a little shorthand technique. I men may have mentioned it before in previous tutorials, but just so you know, in case you started or skipped ahead or forgot, that's why we have zero here. So this automatically loads our image as a grayscale image. So as I said before, adaptive thresholding takes away the necessity of using a threshold value here. So you can actually just set the algorithm and it does its own thing. It automatically chooses a threshold value for you. So let's start here. So in this one, I'm loading a book, Origin of Species. 
That's by Charles Darwin, and it's a black and white image, grayscale image we're loading it as. And we take a look at the image and we use traditional thresholding at first at 127 and a max at 255, just to see how it compares to the others. And then what we're going to do, we're going to actually blur the image a bit, just because it removes noise. It's not cheating, it's just a way to just help the adaptive methods work a little better. And we're going to use each of the three black thresholding methods to see how well they work, okay? These are some default values for this meta adaptive thresholding method. You can leave those untouched. What I'll do, I'll put a note at the bottom here of what they mean, in case you guys want to know. But in the meantime, let's test this out and see. So this is our first image here, the original image. This is our regular binary threshold with 127. It's done fairly well, but as you can see, if you wanted just to isolate the text, there's actually a lot of missing text here. So let's see if the adaptive methods work any better. And indeed, adaptive mean thresholding actually works a lot better, I would say. Now let's take a look at this one, Fustus. One of my favorites actually does work pretty well too. The text is pretty much there. However, it's not ideal, but it's still better. And this is Gaussian Otsu. Otsu, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Thresholding here. And you can see with the blur, it actually does kind of like make it a bit fuzzy. And it's Gaussian method, so that's why it has a blur as well, okay? So that's it for this video on a thresholding and adaptive thresholding and binarization. Let's go back and take a summary of what we've learned. So you've just learned how to do binarization and thresholding in OpenCV and how to take advantage of the adaptive thresholding methods. So now let's stay tuned to the next video, just on dilation, erosion, and edge detection. Thank you.